the outline, uh, <clears throat> sorry, yes. So biocyber security, alternatively known as cyber biosecurity is a hybrid discipline between cyber security, cyber physical security, and biosecurity. The definition is expanding as the field opens and applies to areas such as industrial agriculture and biotechnology, uh, healthcare, personal electronics, genetic databases, and more. It is a field best approached with some knowledge between the spheres of biology and cybersecurity within oneself or within a team. So, biocybersecurity's security's grasp is wide due to improvements in biotechnology, biomedical engineering, and adjacent technologies such as cheap and effective genetic sequencing, digitalization of medical records, biomedic authentication, biocomputing, improved and improved, improving brain-computer interfaces, sophisticated medical implants, powerful smartphones and lab automation, telehealth, especially aided by on-the-go add-ons like otoscopes and more, gene modification, data storage and DNA, and more to follow. Now, with this in mind, you see you have the good, now you also have the potential bad. Some biocyber security translatable threats in the now, near future, and far future are things such as remotely crafted, upgradable, and delivered viruses, human healthcare, in-person DDoS via false wearable reports. Like imagine a bunch of your wearables like saying you're having this issue or that issue causing you to go to the hospital. Now imagine this on a city or a state or a nation scale. There's a threat such as someone smuggling state secrets and biological media like corn kernels in a corn cob. Improved ransomware aided by biomimicry such as like applying evolutionary algorithms or just any such with from cues from nature to just improve how we, you know, uh, implement ways to attack, you know, healthcare systems or the like. There's the idea of epi or genetic logic bombs, increased unauthorized tracking via DNA barcoding, and increased uh, implant manipulation and heart attacks spying within your implants and around you via the implants of others. There's the idea of undermining of biometric authentication and improved and less predictable surveillance via environmental means, such as through plants or microbes that respond to changes in the environment. Imagine stepping over uh, some genetically modified grass that will change color as you step over it. But this is just a sampler. So what does this mean? It's, it means that vulnerabilities that exist are multiplied by at least a dimension and can be even more creative. With more potential for individuals, so two nation states to take advantage of this. And the average individual can be expected to anticipate these threats, especially if we are undereducated about them. So I'll give uh, three rather recent demonstrations uh, through the teams of Dr. Peter Ney and Dr. Yisrael Mirsky. Dr. Ney demonstrated in 2017 that you could remotely hack gene sequencers or just forensic units with malware embedded DNA that's customly designed. In 2019, he demonstrated that he demonstrated that flaws in third-party gene genealogy services uh, could allow for ones to learn healthcare information about people indirectly, as well as implant false relatives. Dr. Mirsky demonstrated that a deep learning enhanced malware could be utilized to make it seem as if someone has a positive or negative diagnosis when the opposite is true in real time. And these modifications were capable of tricking radiologists. And you, as you can imagine, each of these has national security implications in terms of uh, you know, mass fraud or select attacks on individuals, uh, especially uh, the work by Dr. Mirsky, the idea that you can hijack a machine, uh, like a healthcare machine, just to you know, give these false readings. And you can, with current events in mind, you can imagine how dangerous this can be. Well, that said, it's time to discuss biohacking which y'all came for, <laughs> DIY bio and community bio. They describe different modes of decentralized and or deinstitutionalized approaches to understanding biology and the many areas that it touches. No one owns biohacking or the terms that people identify it as, although people have tried. Projects can comprise but are not limited to basic science, bio art, tissue engineering, plant engineering, neural engineering, supplement creation, body modification, ergonomics, and a combination of the above or more. What biohacking is, it's multi-spectral and multifaceted. It's both basic and advanced. It's accessible by all groups, and it's a legitimate hobby and process. But it is poorly understood. It is not, uh, you know, just a means of publicity stunts, 
get rich, get rich quick schemes, terrorism, narrow foci, just for rich dudes, the stuff with movies, or it could be in Netflix specials, although the one that just dropped is kind of entertaining, or coffee butter and shrooms. Simply no, it is much more than that. You may care about both biohacking and biosecurity for many reasons. For one, biotechnological workflows are a physical by nature of the interfaces and increasing intertwining of knowledge bases involved. Healthcare and biotech especially are vulnerable to these attacks, but that also goes for a lot of everyday tech with a sensor that can be applied to a biological aspect. This carries national security implications, of course. Secondly, the tools to work with either are increasingly becoming accessible. For example, you can order a kit to do benchtop gene modification or let's say E. coli or yeast or less than $300. Thirdly, knowing each spirit can make you more well-rounded, marketable, and generally knowledgeable about where we are headed next in policy and in technology. Now, as far as like benefits, biohackers and biohacking is always improving. The same thing goes for DIY bio and community bio. With individuals from all walks of life working on projects that are beneficial to the community, such as COVID-19 vaccine for study, Cheaper drugs and drug delivery in means such as cheaper insulin, cannabinoids, and EpiPens. Cheaper and less concerning genetic tests, prosthetics and implantable devices, clothing materials, food sources, waste processing, such as like plastic degradation, renewable energy, and more. Folks are working on many different areas. And this is just, again, a sample. So it's where to learn and like how to learn, shoot. Remember that Biohacking is decentralized. No one owns the means or the ways. <laughs> um, there are no certs, and there's not just one way to learn. Just as with any field, you want a healthy mix of established research. A lot of that can be found in NCBI slash PubMed, which hosts curated research. You want to go there first, because a lot of what you'll find on Google, Google Scholar grabs anything, and Google even grabs more than anything. And well, you know, you don't want to just, you want to start off with the good stuff the great stuff, or at least the most curated stuff. Now, YouTube has a ton as well. You can learn how to make like a meat berry, as in, you know, you, make, you essentially strip, strip the berry of all the material stack of the scaffold, and then you just culture on top of that. You can learn that from YouTube. You can learn how to grow neurons on a platform. It's pretty cool. Um, there's tons on there in many different directions and from many different countries. Protocols.io lists a bunch of free protocols. Conferences can teach you a lot of what is current and connected to people to learn from and work with, like now. <laughs> uh, oh yes, as far as any uh, questions, I'll, I'll answer that after. Um, but yes, also good old fashioned Googling, you know, after everything's done, doesn't hurt. And I definitely recommend going to Google Scholar first. You even find a lot of information, a lot of new information patents too. But additionally, you'll want to, you know, have a lab space to practice and get formed your ideas just like with any and all like cybersecurity techniques and so, because this is an extension in a way. You want a community to review and bounce ideas off of. You want to, and you want a means of logging and or publishing your work. This allows you to retrace your steps and for others to learn from your successes and mistakes. One of my favorite platforms is Archive, uh, ARXIV and his cousin BioArchive. They allow for free uploading of work, but you can also use Medium too, you know, it's up to you. Um, I do caution that if it's anything that's, you know, that's, that seems dangerous in nature, you know, exercise caution what you upload. But um, further, um, some, some journals search archive for publication material. So you can kill two birds once with one stone if you're trying to publish, uh, you know, in a peer reviewed journal, which is great. Well, that, let's see, with that out of the way, there are vital questions that you'll want to ask yourself, um, such as, what do you want to hack? Why do you want to hack it? Have you done the requisite research? What laws are applicable? Do you have the means? And what safety measures do you have in place? Revisiting that, ask yourself what type of you know, system do you want to work with and what's the pathway? Like, is it a living or non-living biological system, such as an aspect or an aspect of it, such as uh, Let's say, for example, like cells, the organelles, or even just the biological processes. Are you going to be hacking like, you know, some, some particular uh, chain of processing? Are you going to be trying to modify an enzyme, sugars, etc.? Are you trying to hack like a prosthetic or a wearable? 
healthcare device, like a glucose meter. There's a huge community that's focused on hacking those uh, for better functions. Um, there's, are you trying to, you know, hack a forensic system, like a sequencer or something else? There's, there's a lot of places you can go with this. Now, and also ask yourself why, and you know, why do you want to hack it? And what's the outcome or what's the product or the outcome? I like, although I love open-ended projects, I do have uh, some silent endpoints for one. I want to, you know, I want to make sure with any project we're working on, that's A, going to be safe and that it's, you know, it's realizable and that, you know, there's something in mind to help constrain. So it doesn't necessarily wander, but also that there's something, you know, useful out of it. And, you know, you can have such as, for example, you know, an educational project. Uh, you know, some folks have tried their own medicine slash gene therapy. I'm not going to touch that, but I do recommend watching A Natural Selection via Netflix. They do cover that a bit. Um, you could go for an industrial project such as like, you know, pigment production, uh, like, like a natural blue food coloring uh, via bacteria, yeast or cyanobacteria um, modification. You can make construct construction material via mushrooms or kombucha scoby. Scoby stands for symbiotic community of bacteria and yeast. Um, and a lot of folks will dry that out, use it for like clothing or, you know, some sort of uh, packaging material. There's, uh, you know, you could go for an ecological solution such as waste processing in terms of like mealworms, bacteria that eat plastic, drought resistant crops, etc. But also there's a bottom body modification, which uh, call it, you know, called grinding, which allows for the rest restoration, addition, or modification of abilities. There's more, but again, this is a sample. <laughs> Now, it's also worth asking, do you have the means? Can you or your group afford the reagents and equipment? You get a bunch of stuff via eBay and so, but there's a lot of stuff that's just darn expensive you have to save up for. And you'll also need the space to kit it out. Like you'll want a, you'll want to make sure that your room or lab, you know, is, you know, is up, is up to par. Ask yourself, do you have the expertise or working knowledge? And if you don't, who can you connect with? You'll find a lot of professors at universities who are glad to lend their knowledge and to find a collaborator on a project. And they may help allow you to use their space, which is great. But also ask yourself, like, not only can you accommodate the means, but um, can you do this without negatively impacting anyone or the environment around you? Wait, I'm gonna see, uh, oops, let me see. All right, so one question I will ask is, what are some universal signs of authority? One thing I'll say is that, you know, you'll want to, it's, it, you want to consult the research. Oh. Uh, yeah, you want to consult the research out there as well as, you know, the experts in the field. And of course, there's like a lot of uh, ground to break, but again, I recommend like consulting with them and what's already out there first before going out anywhere. Now, Ask yourself, uh, you know, do you have adequate safety procedures? Does trial and error or long periods of inquiry scare you? If so, this is not the field for you, largely because a lot of, you know, a lot of the techniques you'll see and a lot of the successes you've talked about, they take a while. Bi like biotech is, <laughs> it can be a pain, but it is very rewarding. But also if you're self-experimenting, do you have the mental or physical fortitude to carry through without harming yourself? Like, are you willing to think through, work with experts and so? If not, you know, rethink, rethink your plan. Now, it's worth asking, have you performed the requisite research? As in, what is the subject? What has been done? What are the techniques employed? What's the difficulty? What's needed to do them? What's your stick to assess the work done in the field? Who are the experts to refer to and who can you check in with? And I, this has been covered earlier and I can re-answer any specific questions. Also, and back to safety measures, again, consult the literature and the experts slash professionals. But one place to start thinking is the OSHA hierarchy of controls, as in, in terms of hazards that you may enc encounter, what can you eliminate from the equation? What hazards can you substitute? What engineering controls can you implement so that you can get yourself away from the hazards, such as like working in a, uh, you know, in a uh, fume hood or biosafety cabinet? Next, what are administrative controls? Like, how can you change how you work? Um, you know, in terms of, you know, what shifts can you work in? Or, you know, what's your, you know, what modifications to the protocol you can do? But further, you know, wear PPE and how, and what PPE can you wear? And also, is your PPE appropriate? 
if you're working with any lasers, you know, you're going to want to have special, the right goggles. If you're working with like certain chemicals, you want to have the right gloves. Don't, don't be lazy about it. But also, this is probably the most important before you even start. Is your area of interest legal in your country and or region? What in agencies might you have to interface with, such as the U for the U.S. for example, the FBI, the FDA, the OSTP, uh, USDA, EPA, et cetera. And also what pro laws, protocols, concepts are at play, such as dual use regarding technologies, HIPAA concerning pr uh, private information, uh, Nagoya protocol concerning uh, genetics. Now, all that said, there are some really cool groups, movements, and events to check out where you can learn a ton, such as there's DEF CON, check out the Biohacking Village, you guys are awesome. Uh, there's the Globe Community Bio Summit, where you'll come across a bunch of DIY biologists from many aspects working in many different fields and from so many different areas. And so you'll have your academics, you'll have your industry folks, you'll have your, your amateurs, you'll have your government folks, and you'll have a mix. Uh, there's Hope, um, Hacks the Planet Earth, which is which is great. Uh, there's I Am the Calvary, which they've been in this before. So I'll say that, so cyber biosecurity slash cybersecurity, this is a new term in the academic sense, but but uh, I Am the Calvary, they've been working at this like since way before, you know, uh, working at like how to secure medical devices. They're great. And also there's Dynacon, which is a digital naturalism conference, working at new ways to interact with nature. But these are just a sample. I recommend you know checking out more. As for some spots to visit, like post COVID nineteen, I recommend like BioCurious in Santa Clara, California, BioBlaze out in Elgin, Illinois, Baltimore Underground Science Space, which is in Baltimore, Maryland, Counterculture Labs in Oakland, California, and GenSpace New York. And there's a bunch of other spaces. And so, um, but these are just a good sample. Now. That said, thank you. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions regarding what's been discussed, um, yeah, please uh, contact me at questions for polymer at protonmail.com.